Okay, for our second and last day of section 8.3, we're going to get into compound interest. Interest is money that a bank or another financial institution will give you as a way of saying thank you for being their customer. And if you have a savings account, you might notice that you might get a statement uh, four times a year where you'd notice that they are giving you a small amount of money. And uh, that money then uh, that you'd get, say, uh, in your first three months, you might get that at the end of March, you uh, would earn interest on that as well. That's why it's called compound interest. And here's a wonderful formula that we have. We're going to have two formulas that will allow us to find the amount of money that we have uh, when interest is compounded. Uh, and this is a, a formula that will be given to you on your test. You're not going to have to memorize it. Uh, but A is equal to P, parentheses, 1 plus R over N raised to the NT power. A is the total value of the investment at a given time T. It's the amount of money that you're going to have at a certain time. P is the original amount of money. It's called the principal, but it's the amount of money that you open the account with. It's what you start with. R is going to be your annual interest rate. And just like what we saw on day one of 8.3, it must be written as a decimal. You can take your percent, divide by 100 if you'd like, or move your decimal place two steps to the left. Uh, N, you can see a number of N's in this formula, below the R and up high as a power. N is the number of times per year that interest is compounded. And uh, really that's what we have off to the side here in this box. Uh, quarterly, you can think about four quarters in a football game or four quarters in a basketball game. There are four quarters in a dollar. Uh, the uh, word quarterly implies four. Uh, this means that you would get interest four times a year. N would equal four. You might have monthly uh, interest. Uh, you might get a bank statement every month with some interest accumulated, and that would be N equals 12. More rarely, you might get interest daily, uh, 365 days in a year. So in that case, N would equal 365. Finally, you're going to notice that T down here is the amount of time that has passed in years. So uh, these types of problems will really be uh, the type that you just have to find your information and plug in and let your calculator do the work for you. Uh, here is that formula. I am rewriting it. One little word of caution though. Look at the NT up high. Uh, when we're going to enter that into the calculator, we will need parentheses. So P, again, was the principal. Let's read number one. An investment broker deposits $1,000 into an account that earns 2% annual interest compounded quarterly. Uh, the amount of money that we're starting with or beginning with is $1,000. 2 2%. Well, if you have 2%, you can divide 2 by 100 and very quickly get 0 0.02 or take your decimal and move that two places to the left. This problem involves being compounded quarterly. Again, four quarters in a dollar, four quarters in a football game. N is equal to four. Four times a year we will be given interest. We'd like to know the value of the investment after 10 years. T would equal 10. All you have to do is plug all this information in P is 1,000. Here I'm going to say 1 plus, well my R is 0 0.02. I'm going to say slash 4, divide by 4. Carrot, raise it up to a power, in parentheses now. Uh, you have 4 for your N times T, which is 10. And at this point, you know what, we're going to bring the calculator out. And uh, just let the calculator do the work for us. 1,000, parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.02 slash 4. And uh, we're going to raise that up, parentheses, 4 times 10. 
So at this point, just hit enter. This problem wants us to round to the nearest dollar. If you read the directions, 1,221 would be what we get rounding to the nearest dollar. So uh, that's the bank giving you $221 in addition to what you opened the account with as a way of saying thank you. Let's do number two. Very similar kind of a setup. You got the same formula. Just got to remember your NT is up here in uh, parentheses. Uh, what do you start your investment with? Well, P would equal 3,000. An investment of 3,000 is placed into an account. It's earning 1% annual interest. So tell you what, 1 divided by 100 is 0 0.01. Move your decimal two places to the left and you get that. We're compounded monthly. So N would equal 12. This is going to go on for five years. We're going to keep the money for five years. We'd like to know how much we have at that time. So uh, we'll have 3,000 out in front. There's 1 plus 0 0.01 slash 12 carat, raise that up to the 12 times 5. And again, we're going to let the calculator do all the work for us. Uh, this time we'll go to the nearest penny. Uh, I'll be honest with you, that's probably the most typical thing that you'll be asked to do is round to the nearest cent. We're going to raise that up to caret, parentheses 12 times 5. And uh, we'll get $3,153.75, you can see, uh, when we round to the nearest penny. So uh, that's how much money we have uh, at the end of three years, or five years, so sorry. Well, you might have noticed there was one formula that we skipped. This formula will also be given to you as well. What if instead of being given interest even every day, we'd want to say, I want to receive interest every moment and have that interest compounded? Now, this is not typically what a customer, an average customer, would receive from a bank. Uh, but it's a very simple formula. You could refer to it as the PERT formula. P, again, is the original value, the principal, just like before. A is the total value of that investment at a certain time. R, once again, is your interest rate, annual interest rate, but here we go again, written as a decimal. T is the amount of time that's passed in years, but look at E. E is a number in higher mathematics that we see quite a bit. It's uh, very similar to a number like pi. It's called a transcendental number. It's an irrational number. It's about 2.71828. Uh, and thank goodness your calculator has that stored. So let's go to the back. You deposit $500 in an account that is compounded continuously, 4% interest rate annually. You want to find the balance after one year. So you know what? We're going to use this PERT formula. Once again, notice that your R and T are going to need to be in parentheses. Uh, P is the amount of money that you begin with. You'd say, hey, that's $500. Uh, R We'll take your 4%, divide by 100, uh, move your decimal two places to the left. You can see you get 0 0.04. Uh, it's compounded continuously, so there's no N whatsoever, but we want to know what's happening after one year, so let T equal 1. So A is equal to 500 E carat 0 0.04 times 1. And of course, we know any decimal times 1 is just going to be that decimal itself. But you might wonder how we're going to type this out. 500, you might wonder where E is. Well, look at the 4 button. Go 1 to the left, you'll see an LN button. And right above LN, real faintly in blue, is E to the X. I'm going to hit 2nd, and then hit that button. 2nd, LN, will bring up E to a power. And very nicely, it's already written with the parentheses in there. 
Of course, you don't have to say times 1. I think we all know what that is. Uh, but very quickly, you can see that it's $520.41. So uh, that's how we can find uh, the amount of money when we are being compounded continuously. So we've got a worksheet uh, due, uh, with some review as well. Hopefully this is going well for you. Best of luck to you.